Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. Now, normally I don't comply to the demands of the internet, but when it came to this Vanguard, you guys blew up the comments with the idea that it most likely was not piston rings, and it most likely was carbon deposits from a bad running carburetor inside. So, I'm going to meet your demands. We ordered up probably one of the most janky gasket kits off of Amazon for this. It was like 26 bucks for this gasket kit. It was not the lowest cost kit that was on there, but at 26 bucks, we can gamble that. Now, John went out of his way to make me this awesome engine box. It's got two holes in it in order to be able to put the rods in when we pull them out from the rockers. We've got a flywheel side on it so we know exactly which side that it goes. So we're going to put that behind it so we can take each side apart and put it into the box in order to keep everything organized. And you guys really got after me about the gas tank stuff. So now... We have a gas tank that is hanging up here, out of the way, where it's never going to get hit with the exhaust, so that you all won't tell me I'm going to burn my garage down. You're all going to tell me I'm going to burn my garage down anyway, but let's get into this engine. Just going to go and tear it apart with a little bit of hate and discontent until we're down to where we need to be. Go ahead, John. So we're sorting off anything that has to do with the sheet metal is going in one container. Anything that has to do with the heads or the valve covers goes into John's box. And I'm going to break off the intake manifold attachments on their own in just a second. Now, I am going to take off the rectifier plug and then pull the voltage rectifier right off with the side cover. And I pulled the starter off of this, which I later found out I didn't have to do in order to be able to get to the side cover bolt that's in underneath it. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. So we'll get the spark plug off, and we must have a hidden bolt somewhere holding this. The engine's definitely got some high hours on it, John, so a little bit of prying on it or even thumping it from the side might be what's needed. Give it a, give it a thump with the other end, the rubber end. No, don't hit this. Hit this. Okay, I don't know. You figure it out. Got it. Alright, there's one hidden apparently underneath where the exhaust connects. There we go. So there was one on the back side. Right in there, if you guys can see it. Yeah, look at that. That whole entire cylinder. You can see the cylinder in there. Did you get it? Okay, you might have a couple of washers. Yeah, you've got some retaining washers there. You're going to have to carefully get off of there. They look like they're copper press washers for holding it. Let me do my side, and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on. So, yep, put those in there, because those go with the valve stuff. I'm, I'm used to... That's fine. We're just trying to keep it sorted. So, this engine is older. Obviously, got some hours on it. And that's the reason why we're making sure we keep stuff sorted as to what side it goes on and stuff. Yeah, whatever, whatever those are, they, they suck. 
I'm just using a flathead to get them up. Yep. Oh, oh you're in your new, your new knife now. Yeah, this was my Father's Day gift in order to replace my old one. These things are great. I love these fold-up knives. What company is it? Oh, some knockoff brand. I don't remember. Sheffield. It's a Sheffield one. Well, maybe Sheffield isn't a knockoff brand. I don't know. You guys tell me. Is Sheffield a real brand or is it or is it a knockoff brand at this point? I cannot get that one. So what went where? I believe the Chinesium gasket kit ah. had some of these in it. But just in case. I got it. Cool. Yep, go ahead and set that right there. That way we have it set aside. Oh, it smells. It smells? What do you mean it smells? Let me smell. Oh, somebody had transmission fluid in this thing. That smells like burnt tranny fluid. I'm going to bet this thing was having some issues for a while then. All right. Yeah, the inside of that is not too bad. Yeah, you got the gasket off of yours. How hard is that gasket? Because this should be soft rubber. Yeah, if I bend that, it's going to crack it. So that's definitely old. So nobody's been in here. Oh yeah, my side smells like transmission fluid too. Alright, so this shroud actually goes in underneath everything. And I'm not sure I can take it off without removing all of this. So for now, we're at least going to get the choke assembly removed. So there's one. There's two. And all of these are all 10 millimeters, so I'm not really worried about keeping it sorted because it just is what it is. And there's a special place in some sort of purgatory for however that goes. There we go. And we'll zip this one. And that should be the last one for this back shroud. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so this last one, oh yeah, it is a ratchet. Okay, so that one's going to have to be done with a ratchet. And if we come around, John, there's a hidden one right in there that John already got off of there that I couldn't find earlier because it was covered in caca. So as it is right now, we need this piece off. We need to get this linkage out. Now, if I zoom in here, you'll see I already popped this up. So if that goes up, then this rod pops out. And then you just undo this spring off of here when I'm off camera. And then we got 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter. And then on this back side, we got one, two, three, four. And outside of disconnecting from the governor, this whole entire assembly should lift off so that we can get this black piece here out of here. And then we will be at the point that we can get to the head. On a side note, I have filled this multiple times with PB Blaster in order to break down what we believe to be carbon inside. So we'll go from there. You ready? Yes! Okay. Alright, so let's get the spring undone, like we said we were going to do on the video. There's that. So now those are disconnected from each other. And you can go ahead and pop those, and this whole entire intake should fall off. So you go ahead and pop this one while I hold it and I believe the whole thing should pop off. Plus or minus it being stuck with years worth of corrosion. Okay. Uh, where am I putting these two? Inside the cup cap? And I need to cut this free from this piece. Yeah, go ahead and throw them in the hub cap. They're going to be the only ones that size. There we go. Okay, let's see if I'm right. So at this point, uh, you got that little hammer of yours? 
Where's that tack hammer? Okay. There it goes. Okay, there's your tack hammer. Sweet. Okay, so that goes like that. So there's the D port going in. We've got new gaskets to go there. So we'll get that figured out. Now at this point, we need to undo the ones on the back like we talked about. So take that one and that one, please. And there's gonna be a chunk that's gonna fall off with the top one, I believe. Yep. And these are proprietary lengths to fit on the back side, so just throw them in the hubcap. Okay, yep, just put the whole thing in the hubcap. And we're going to see if we can undo that and hang it off the back. Rather than try and unbolt the whole, undo the whole uh, governor assembly. Yep. yep. Okay, so at this point, I would bet I can pick this up and move it back. Slide this out the front. Except for it's got some stupid wire clip of doom in the middle. This is here so that this doesn't go down into the flywheel and screw you up. So don't break that. Don't be dumb. It is necessary. So while we're here, we've got the coil kill there. That comes across to here. You've got your coil kill wire in here, and then you've got your coupler for the kill to your ignition right here. All right, now we've got this set aside, and we can get to the fun part of attempting to break these heads free, and go from there. Now, looking at this, it looks like the head studs it looks as if you have to take the rocker studs out first. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that spark plug out because we need it out while we're cleaning the head and it's easier to do while it's on the engine. As you can see, those head bolts are underneath the rockers. So we're gonna have to pull those. And this is the reason why John made this box so that we can be able to pull this rocker assembly and set it on the side of the box that corresponds to the engine. So we've got our flywheel on this side, so therefore this one goes here, and this one goes here, and the rods go in the holes corresponding over the top. So that's our next step. Here we go. All right, we're going to try to do this live. We have the all elusive 10 millimeter long. There we go. And we'll set that in the corresponding side of the box. And set that one in the corresponding side of the box. Now, we're going to pull these out one at a time, making sure to put them in their corresponding side. Which actually, it looks like we drilled the hole a little too tall, so it's trying to go down into the box. So, we're just going to set them down on the very edge of the box on each side and let the rocker hold them over. And there. So at that point, we should be ready to break that head free. Yep. Is yours being stupid? Why is yours not coming off? And isn't it supposed to be longer? Or, or did I get this wrong? No, you got that right. Uh, I, I, I'm missing. Whoa! Did break anything? Nope. Nope, nope. Okay, so put this in here. There we go. And set that in the corresponding side of your box. Okay, so set this one in the corresponding side. 
No, no. We ended up drilling the hole too high up in the box, so we're just going to put it there. Okay, so now do this one. Yeah, you got to set the socket all the way down on. Yep, go for it. There you go. Uh oh, where did the rod go? Oh, uh, it, 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 I have it. Okay. Find it out. Okay. Okay, be really careful because if that rod drops down into the block, we're tearing apart a lot more. Can you get it with this magnet? There, good boy. Okay, so set that on the side that that goes on. Okay, I'll take the magnet. Now get the rocker free. Now remember, the other one was glued on pretty good, so you might have to tap on that lower block. No, nope, that one came off. Okay, put it in there. Okay, so I know I'm going to get questions about this. So on a Briggs & Stratton Intech, you adjust your rocker here. On these, you adjust your rocker on this side here. So we got one, two, three, four, 12 millimeter. I don't know whether inch pound Uga is gonna do this, but we'll try it with the Kaimo first and you can try your inch pound, go ahead. Did it come off? No, nope, it's not going to. Okay, so I'll break mine and then I'll pass you this. Never mind, I'm not going to break mine. Maybe. Okay, so I want to point this out. May or may not work. If you have one like this, if you twist on this while it's going, sometimes it'll actually still pop it. Like so. Okay, go ahead and do yours, and then we'll see if we can pop these off. Whoa, we gotta get on it on it. Okay. On it on it. There you go. Okay. Yep. A little more. Good boy. So... Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. There you go. Okay, you gotta square you gotta square down on it when you do it. Mm -hmm. You're slightly off to one side, so make sure you square down on it. There you go. Good job. Yep. Where am I putting this one? It's okay, right there. I wonder if those are different lengths. Okay, so it turns out those are both the same length, but we're still going to sort them anyway, just because. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I'll pull mine. And just like your side, the lower ones are whited out on mine also. Okay. Alright, so at this point, this is going to be stuck. We're going to find an implement of thump that is not... Okay, no. Nope. So, when you're dealing with something like this and you have fins, you don't want to use a metal object. You want a rubber object. Okay? So, I'm going to put my hand under it, and I'm going to have you thump that there and see if it'll break free. There we go. All right, take that off and show it to the camera what it looks like inside. Yep, show the in underside to the camera. Nope, this side. There we go. Oh yeah, that's covered in carbon. Yep, right there is carbon sludge that was letting loose. Oh. oh, that might be a broken valve. Is that a broken valve? What is that? Is that the way the 
Oh, that's just the way the camera was catching the reflection. That's fine. What are you owing? There's, there's a giant pile of black. Yes, there, oh, there's a huge pile of black. Okay, we'll show them that afterwards. So we'll stick that in there. Okay, where's the rubber mallet? My turn to smack again. Oh, you're going to smack it? Go for it. Again. There we go. Oh yeah, tons of carbon. Absolutely massive amount of carbon buildup in there. So, when I took it off, there was a giant thing of sludge, or liquid, uh, and, and there's that breaking off. And then, here's that inside with all the fiber. We've got our big old Vevor cleaner here for today's dollar store mix. We're going to try about a third super strength mean green and the rest of it water. We'll see what we end up with. I took five seconds to set these onto a white paper towel. So you could see the carbon chunks that had built up on the edge of the gasket that were coming loose into the engine as we were running it. Well, we're sitting here checking out our Chinesium gasket kit, and quality job three is definitely what I would say about this. If you take this and you bring it over here and you put it on here, the best part is, is that gasket is not round it's actually oval shape where it goes on the cylinder so that's not exactly the best quality assurance there another thing is that i'm going to point these out because john just asked what these are this is your exhaust valve guide and one thing that i have found is these are not worth swapping out of these chinesium kits a lot of times the head gaskets will work, the valve cover gaskets will work, the intake gasket, the exhaust manifold gasket will kind of work. These, on the other hand, don't bother installing unless you have to. These usually are a waste of time. If you're at the point you need these, buy the real ones. One hour of cycling with one-third mean green from the dollar store. Hi, right, John. Let's see what they look like. Yep, set the lid right there. Oh, that is black. Holy cow, that definitely took some stuff off. All right, give me just a sec. Can you grab the handles right here? No, no, just reach right in and pull them out. It's okay. It's the same stuff you clean your hands with. I know, it feels like a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, reach in. Pull them out. Let's see what they look like. We've never tried using this stuff in order to clean these, so we'll see how this looks. Yeah, rinse it off. Oh, that looks really good. All right, let's see what the head looks like. Yeah, rinse it all off. Get, every, get all of the cleaner off of it. Well, that was definitely worth it. Okay, next one. Is that the other head? Yeah, that looks heavy. That must be the other head. Yep. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I'd say the mean green definitely did good with that. Yep. And the other valve cover. Nice. Oh, huh? Yep. I'm on it. It's okay. Cool. All right, so this is the worst of the carboned one, because this should have been my side. It should say P1 on it, or 1, or something. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, where'd the 1 go on this thing? Right now there's somebody screaming at the screen that they know where the 1 is. Um, all right, we'll come back to that idea. Oh, there it is. There's a one right there in the corner. P1. 
to indicate which side it came from. Whoa, as I almost dropped you guys. Alright, so that took out quite a bit of the carbon, but really it ate all the oil out from the other side. And this stuff stains. It, it what? It stains. The first time I put my hand in, and then the, and then the second and third, it didn't work. Oh, okay. Rinse it off. Oh, yeah. It does stain your hand. Okay, well, that's good to know. Oh, yeah. It did. It stained right down through. Alright, let's check this. So this one here should have a 2 on it, right there, so that's John's side. Oh yeah, that cleaned out nicely. Needs a little bit of scrubbing, but nothing too major. So there we go. We're going to rinse these off to make sure we got all the cleaner off of them and everything. And then we'll go see if we can put them back together. Oh yeah, that's some healthy carbon right there. Nice healthy carbon. So we're going to get it cleaned up, spray it down good, and then get it put back together. Yummy. Now one thing that I noticed is that unlike a lot of other Briggs & Stratton heads, this has no dowel pins whatsoever. So we're just going to use its own bolts in order to hold it together. So we've got smiley face upside down and we're just going to flip it over and get this out of the way and see if we can get it on there and finger start these. Now I looked it up and the interwebs wants to argue about whether these are about 140 inch pounds or about 160 inch pounds but at the end of the day basically that translates to somewhere around 10 foot pounds on each one and that translates to get them in and then Cross do them with the inch pound Oga Doga. And then cross do them with the lightweight Oga Doga. And there we go. That's about how complicated I care to get. Alright, so we're going to take that and we're going to put it down in and you got to make sure it's actually in the dot down there. And on these, these have a cap in them that only goes one way, so that's pretty obvious. So you stick that down through right there and that's going to go there. And that goes on this side here. Now, this engine was running, but it's going to have to be retuned because we put a new gasket in it. But if we can get it put together like it is right now, in theory, we should at least be able to test, test it and then tune it in from there. So there's that. And then we're just, remember you're going into aluminum here. So just a little German. You're gonna put it in just tight enough like that so that it's happy and call it good. Now we gotta do the other side. There's no sense in going any further if we don't verify that the rockers are actually working correctly. So if we turn it over, we got movement there. Now this one. Now from there, we see movement on that one. 
movement to this one. Hi, John. High five. We got him in. Okay, that was probably a... That was even worse. <laughs> Never mind. We're not doing third time's the charm. <laughs> so there we go. Rockers are in. Head is in. Now we can start flambasting everything else back on. And go from there. Alright, John's currently figuring out both of the valve covers. I'm working on the intake. So, yeah, as you can see, these gaskets are really quality job three. But we've got all of the bolts in. We're going to try to bring this around and get it put in. And... We have to lift up the throttle control bar out of the way, lift up the choke bar, and very lightly start the two bottom ones. That one, ah, that D thing came off again. This is not an easy one. I'll glue it. Hot glue it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the in the learning experience, whatever thing, actually the trick to these, if you have a really hard one to do, is you put just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of RTV sealant right where the bolt goes. So that that way it holds it right where the bolt is and it doesn't go anywhere. But it doesn't get into the way of the mating surface so that you don't end up with an air leak. Mm. Well, John's finishing up the last couple of things that are in his box. What do you guys think? Was the box a good idea? I think it was awesome. I think it really worked out. So, John, what is this? A flywheel. So that's your flywheel, which started out as a piece of... Some sort of construction paper. Mm -hmm. And then this is a Puffs Lotion box. <laughs> and then this is another box cut in half. Yep. Okay. So you V'd it there and then put the two sides together. So we did learn that we need to drill these holes either a little bit lower so the bars don't try and go through. But I think that worked out pretty good. You guys tell me what you think. Do you need a John Puffs box? <laughs> that sounds like a brand of cigarette. We're going to get banned. <laughs> Hi, right, we got our gas connected. We got a choke return spring rigged up here. We've got a throttle pull rigged up. Let's see if it'll actually do something. Well, John, I'd say that's much happier than it was, but needs a little bit of work. What would you say? It's dirty. It's dirty? Was this a fun project? Yes. All right. Would you recommend doing this as a father-son project for other people? Yes. All right. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hard do you think doing the head gaskets and stuff on this was? As in 10 meaning the easiest? No, 10 meaning the hardest. Probably like a... So you say it really wasn't that hard to do? Probably four or something. Probably somewhere in there. Well, there you go, folks. John says that on a scale of 1 to 10, this was about a 4 to a 5 job to do. Well, now we got to figure out what we're going to do with it. 
Having open headers on it and everything, most likely the idle jet is not keeping up because of the straight flow. So we'll get some headers figured out for it and go from there.